this uh, meeting for order, and Mr. Hewitt, you want to talk to us about item number two on the agenda? Here comes a. This is really uh, Miss Ferguson's item. She's got the background on it. All right, Miss Ferguson. Share your knowledge. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope everybody is well this morning. Um, on the Wednesday of this week, we had the second bid opening for this winter's canal dredging project. The first bid opening was on September 6th. At that time, we only received one bid, so it had to go back out again. Um, the two bids that were received this time were Marpol at $1.2 million and King at $840,000. Um, that is the bid tab at attachment one in your packet. Uh, right Angle Engineering, Shane Lippert, has certified um, King's bid and is recommending an award, which is attachment two. And the contract is attachment three. Um, we are recommending award of the contract. The only um, other two pieces of information that I wanted to let you know is that um, the contractor would like to start mobilization and being on site next week on Friday because they only do have a month turnaround to try to get the dike work done before the dredging begins. However, the situation that we explained to you guys about the core changing the policy and not letting us use core sites anymore and we have to go to the Scott Bonnet site, we are still waiting for Canada to sign off on our site. And they have had that information for three months. Um, so our engineer is leaning on them and we are expecting them to expedite that process for us and he's relaying this information. But um, any timetables may change based on that information as far as when he begins to be able to get on site and start that type of work. And the second piece of information is the Canal Dredging Working Group did meet after this bid opening on um, Wednesday. And based on chain certification, if that came through, which he did do, they were um, eager to have King do the work because they're the ones that did it last time. Any discussion? I just make an observation. Make an observation, and I talked to David and to Christy about it. These are so different. It put a red flag up for me, because it turns out the King dredging, which is the lower one, did it last time, so his numbers are probably good, and he has tools in his possession that the other guy's going to have to go out and source. It's going to be very expensive, so his cost is going to be more. So the fact that he's already prepared for it, he's got the equipment, he's local, he's done it before, this cost is similar to what he did last time. It just is a much more reliable bid than I thought it was last time when I read it the first time. Was this the sole, was King the sole bid last? Thank you. And just in conversation, um, Marco did not stay for the bid up and they dropped their packet off and left. But what it sounds like from the mandatory pre bid <coughs> conference is that Marco was going to have some subcontractors and King's doing all his own work. And we don't expect any change. Last time there was no change in the contract. I, I, I was not here last time, but I don't think so. David, last time there was no change, they didn't come back and ask for a change order. But we didn't have to build a spool containment area last time either. But that's in the bid. Yes, that's correct. Anything else? Not hearing that. Is there a motion? Make a motion. We accept the bid. All right. Mike makes a motion to accept the bid. Second. Second, Miss Pat. Any more discussion? Can Can I ask a question of the? motion maker that it take the form of the recommended motion in there because that yes. that spells out exactly what we need administratively. Ms. Pat, do you agree with that? Yes, I do. All right. Everyone understands where we are? Yep. Yes, sir. Any more discussion? Ready to vote? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Madam Clerk, it's unanimous to approve the contract as submitted. Anything else? 
I just, you know, I, I, I have comment, and uh, you know, the original resolution that many of us, all the commissioners, sat in the Inlet Beach Committee meeting, right, and the committee reviewed those, and we had an opportunity to comment on those. But I feel that the original resolution is, is a critical, well done, time sensitive document that was prepared by the town and the Inlet Beach Committee, and compliment them for doing that. And it captures all of the cr critical, crucial statements that once approved will be shared with all of the required parties to state the position from the town of Holden Beach. You know, and again, I use, I use that word, uh, critical statements and time sensitive. We know we have an issue, we know that when we were in New Bern, right, we were all kind of taken back and surprised by the fact. I think it's time that, past time, that we get this out in front of these folks, ASAP. And uh, David, I guess the question that I have is, who does this resolution go to? Start, not, not everybody, but the top, top line people. Um, I believe that we've discussed that <clears throat> it should go to the county commissioners at the state level. Uh, it should go to the Division of Water Quality, the Division of Water Resources, our uh, uh, House of Representatives, the State House of Representatives, our State Senator, and then at the federal level, our uh, uh, Congressman and also our uh, Senator. Okay. Will Mr. Stone get a copy of this too as well? Um, I'm assuming that the Chairman of the County Commission is going to end up on his desk. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. And, and the Army Corps of Engineers. Yeah. <laughs> and again, this, this document along with the, uh, what Noel was currently working on, you know, is another, another critical part of this whole thing. And uh, that's the easements. And I wait to hear from Noel uh, at, at our next meeting pretending to an update on the easement status. The other, the other point of information that David shared with us also is the fact that that the, there is a temporary hold on all of the uh, dredging projects throughout the state. So now is the time to fire the cannon, as far as I'm concerned. And it can't be done later. It should be done sooner. Thank you. My, my only uh, my only um, comment is, you know, and, and you already acknowledged it, Pat, that a lot of work went into it from the from the committee from our from the board's uh, committee, and I'm a little reluctant to wordsmith it, and I understand, you know, everybody likes to do that, but can we can we ask the chairperson of that to comment on this? She's in the audience. Do you have any? Mr. Mayor, can we? If your commissioners want it, that's no problem. Is that a consensus? Is it consensus? You don't come speak in the microphone. Could, could, could I just make a suggestion that we wait until all our comments are done before we ask the person who drafted the, that the would, original that to, would, to that, speak? That's fair. Yeah. That would be the proper procedure. That's fair. I, I would just like to respond to, to Joe's comments. My belief is that the committees that we, the subcommittees and committees that we appoint are here to give us advice. It's up to us to decide and which whether we're going to follow it or not. And it's been the practice of the board prior to this particular issue to have a lot of input on what was finally decided by the board of commissioners. So I would just like to say that, and, and in addition to that, I have stated on a number of occasions that I don't think it's appropriate for the board members to comment when one of the committees is doing their business because we influence them. I like their opinion, <coughs> excuse me, I like to hear their opinion absent any influence from myself or I would appreciate from the other board members. So the fact that we had the opportunity to speak at the meeting doesn't really address the issue of whether all of our comments were, were actually given or taken into consideration. 
Next, I'd like to say that I really appreciate all the work that went into it. I, it was a lot, of, a lot of work, a lot of discussion, a lot of hard work. And so if any changes are made, it's, they're, they're just to try to clarify or make it a little bit more powerful, the statement that we're trying to make. And I guess fourth is, whichever way we go, there's going to be no delay. We're going to vote on it today, whether we accept the original or, or the amended one. So there'll, there'll be no effect on whether this is going to be sent out to the, to the people who are coming to receive it. Having said that, all of that, I'm in favor of the revised edition because I just think it clarifies the issues. I, and I also have two different, I have two amendments to that. One of them, there's a typo. On page 13, uh, it says long term instead of long, long term reach. Uh, it's like the third, whereas. Oh, yes. By a long term reach plan. Yep. And then in the whereas at the bottom, mm -hmm. just, just to highlight the fact that I think we all are in agreement that by depositing the sand on Oak Island rather than on Hogan Beach. It's that, <coughs> that sand is going to drift back into the inlet much faster than if it was put on Hogan Beach. So I just uh, changed it where the, whereas natural near shore transport of sand, neutral drift occurs from east to west in Long Bay, making sand placement on the western of Oak Island of time-limited benefit while potentially impacting Lockwood Folly Inlet. That's what it currently says. And I just amended that to, so excuse me, I'm sorry, 13 seconds, second from the bottom. Whereas natural near shore transport of sand via littoral drift occurs from east and west of Long Bay, making sand placement on western Oak Island of time-limited benefit while increasing the negative impact on Lockwood Folly. I think that just makes the statement a, a little clearer. So with, with those two revisions into the amended uh, suggested letter, I would, I would ask the rest of the commissioners to consider sending the amended uh, motion or, rather than the original while acknowledging and, and appreciating all the hard work that was done by the committee. Thank you. Yeah, I have to. Uh, my my issue here is, we have a, a proposal from a subcommittee that I thought was a good proposal, and when I heard when they discussed it, they did. I thought it did a good job. I think it does a good job. Could I wordsmith it? I thought about this last night. Yeah, I could wordsmith it, and I could keep wordsmithing it. I could every month take a look at it and make a little bit of improvement. I don't think that's necessary. I don't think it's necessary. I think this document does what we intended it to do. They, they did it for it. They helped us put it together. Uh, I think it does a good job. It could be improved, but as it is, it does the job. And I would be in favor of approving it as it is and getting it out because I agree it's time sensitive. The proof of this message that we have a position with regard to sand and the inlet and, and that is important. And I think the public needs to know what our position is. I, I would like to remind everybody that, again, and as Mike said, the Inlet Beach Management Board is an advisory board. We don't have to delay approving an amended version. It doesn't have to go back to them to rework it. We can approve with changes and do it, if we want to do it today, if we're convinced we know all of our audiences and that it is appropriate for all of those levels, then we can approve it today. Now that I've heard that you know, we are acknowledging it is local, it is state, and it is federal. And where I felt that this needed a little bit more bolstering was if it went at a federal level to have more clarity for people who are not intensely aware of what is happening here. Um, so there doesn't have to be a delay in doing it. And again, I know that I sat at the meeting and one of the requests I made was since we had two resolutions to make it clear how the resolutions were being fed and that was in the end one of the things that I tried to do by sectioning it. 
My last point would be the people who are sitting here who have the most experience working with delivering documents to different audiences are our town manager and our assistant town manager. So I, I'm interested in, if they don't feel that the change brings anything, helps anything, um, that's fine. But I would also like to hear what they think about the clarity and the detail that was added. I'll speak to it. Either one of them will work. Um, I think that the, the version, the, the second version, does refine um, a bit and reorganizes. It looks like there's a um, stuff was moved in whole paragraphs with, with, with some minor wordsmithing. Um, either one of them uh, would work. Um, I, I think that we want to make sure that we keep an eye on the prize here and that this is a policy document and that it goes, goes out with the widest um, fire for effect uh, that we can. So, I, I mean, either one of them work. The, <clears throat> the revision set forth by Commissioner Pat um, does seem to reorganize and logically, to me, it flows better. But I don't get it. And I'll just say that, um, of course, I'll work closely with the Inland Patient Protection Board and we'll always value what they say. Um, but they are a subcommittee and anytime any committee brings something to you, you guys are uh, able to make changes to that. So whatever your pleasure is, as long as we get to this document, to get us where we need to be and make a stance and moving forward. I think, I think either of them will, will do that for you. So it's just whatever your preference is. I would uh, like to share some thoughts on this, if I may. If I'm not at board. Um, there are some concerns that I have that don't deal with the verbiage in the document. Um, This is going to be public record, of course, and who knows, as a question was asked, who will be receiving this and have access to it? Well, it's the whole world that will have access to it, and one of the main concerns that I have is that some of the documentation uh, might be literally correct as it's written. It is also painful, like the folly inlet the whole of each side of it as the most erodible, most hazardous, most risky, you know, keep right on with risk things of any property in Long Bay, maybe. So what does that do to investors? What does that do to insurance companies? And the list goes on and on, painting us with a wide brush of high risk and don't go to it type looks. It makes me think about Ocean Isle Beach. Is there anyone in the room that feels like <clears throat> that Holland Beach is a race faster than the east end of Ocean Isle Beach right now? The doc. I'm sorry. No, no, I, 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 I'm sorry. This has been part of the discussion all along. I understand. <clears throat> and and so uh, why why paint ourselves into a corner? tend to be labeled as the most risky place in Long Bay. You know, that's a big concern. Then, kind of probably not going to be popular to say this, this is good hard work. It's a good exercise. But it's not the way to work. In the real world, in the real world, getting things done is behind the scenes communications with the core and so forth. Most of this information is already in the hands of the core and, and the right kinds of people. Uh, they know that. 
uh, I'm wondering who are we trying to influence with this? And I really don't know the answer to that question. Um, we all agree we're all on the same team. So what is our goal? Because we've got to have results by attaining our goal. We have this information. The people that are going to make the decisions have this information. So I'm not saying it's bad, I'm not saying not to do it. But I do have a problem with some other facts. There's no addressing the fact that in the last 40 years or so, 50 years, we've lost, you know, we keep talking about the East End of the Beach. But where is the East End of the Beach? First of all, you think, way down there on the East End. Well, John, for example, where your house was down there, how about that row of houses and lots that's gone from down there since I there's no mention of that. How about further down? <clears throat> you know, it's it's the big picture. It's not the recent picture. And, and uh, I know we're all trying to do good. We're all trying to accomplish the same thing. But um, I don't know that so much of this negative stuff in here is going to help us accomplish anything by making the world aware of it whenever the ones that we're trying to convince are the head. Um, and I don't really mean to ramble on, but are we 100% certain that all this data is 100% correct? Um, I know. As I said earlier, whenever you look at a time frame of the last 10 or 15 years, that specific statement might be true, but in the big picture, the bigger picture, it might not be true. And again, pointing to Ocean Isle is certainly eroding more than Old Beach. So why do we want to state that it's the most erodible part in Long Bay? Um, I don't know, I'm going to shut up, but I just, I can argue some different angles on this thing. I'll be quiet, really listen to her. You want to come up and speak in the microphone, ma'am? Now we do appreciate the hard work of you and your group. Whether they just hold it up 
whatever, if they feel like they need it, I want them to have it. So that's why I'm pushing to get something voted on. Now, um, last night when I got this, I saw it in the back of the packet um, that Heather sent out. And I went through the original, and then I went through Patty's and started going through it, and pretty much every paragraph has got changed. So I kind of stopped going through it because it's a lot of, a lot of changes. Um, in whatever version you adopt, I urge you to run it through a spell checker and run it through a grammar checker. Please put it on Grammarly. Don't send anything out that you don't run through Grammarly or at least a grammar checker. Um, because there's more than you spotted, Mike. <laughs> um, but I, um, as I was going through it, I, I just kind of stopped at about 10.30 and I thought, I'm going to stop. And went through the kind of where did we come from to get to this point. And um, we started August 16th with that first agenda meeting um, where the staff brought the draft. And then we had our first, our first beach board meeting and that was going to be the, um, you know, when we had the brand came, I think every one of you guys were there. And we worked through that. We spent, you know, quite a bit of time working through that. And it was going to be the first work product that we sent to you. Um, the, the final version was on the agenda for your meeting. Um, it was uh, Resolution 1810. Unfortunately, the meeting was canceled due to Florence. Um, we had another agenda meeting. We agreed we were going to bring it back um, to, the, to the Beach Board meeting. Since the Beach Board didn't get to see the final version. Um, and we also had quite a few changing situations due to the situation. Um, Beachboard Net, we had a few minor changes. Um, and because it was already 18-10, we agreed that those minor changes were going to just be slip sheeted. I don't know if those are in the original version, page 16 and 17, that was in your packet for today or not. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the slip sheet is reading. Is it good or not? The AIWW in the first paragraph, the yeah. uh, initial for the after the interest of work away. Yep. Um, and then um, the other changes were in now, therefore be it resolved. And they, okay. they were changed and included. Great. They were very small. They were very small. And then last night, you got the change from Pat. So um, that's kind of where it stands. But my point being, though, that there's quite a bit of work leading up to that. So that's kind of what I wanted to say. Now, I read Patty's version. There's not a lot of it that gives me heart, you know, a lot of heartburn or anything. Um, most of it seems to be a reordering, a rewording. Um, there's, uh, there were a couple of things that she changed, she left out, that I would have included. Um, for example, um, changes to tourism. Now, from my reading, it seems that tourism is important to the county and it's important to the state. I would leave tourism in there. Um, you know, that kind of thing, but it's your call. This board is an advisory board. We advise you and we, we send you drafts for you to approve. And um, that's up to you. So whenever you approve, that's that's your prerogative. So. And I'm a member of that board, and I think if it were just me, if it were just the Vicki Myers board, whatever I sent you would not be, it would not be what the Beach Board sent you. But I don't have that right. So um, I fully rec recognize that I'm just one member of one board. So, you know, that's kind of my statement. But I also, I really respect the other members of my board, and I'm, I'm speaking for myself and not for them. Taking it, listening to the mayor, I just like to, and I, I appreciate as Vicki did that the comments being made about our East End and erodibility and things, and I find it in different places in reports that have been written by our consultant. Um, 
but I think your point is, Mr. Mayor, is do we really want to be emphasizing the opinion that the east end of Golden Beach is the most erodible place in Long Bay? Um, and again, given that you see what some of the other islands have, and it's the, does it bring something special to a resolution document to state that? Where, where is the city? Is the third, third, third one down on page four? In the original resolution, it can be found on page 16, the mm -hmm. third from the bottom. And it was it was transferred as is to the version that I created, the amended version. Yeah, I, I can appreciate the mayor's comments as well, but you know, we're in competition for sand, right? Um, so if we don't show a need, and, and maybe that's a little, maybe we can dial that back a little bit, but we definitely have to show a need. Um, so we can, can uh, get our fair share. I guess the point that, that I got confused when I read the newspaper, and I won't mention the individual's name, but they have said that uh, one of the comments was that uh, Holden Beach may not need the sand. That, that sticks in my head, and I'll never forget that saying because that's not the case. We need the sand. I I think the key to the uh, the resolution is the, isn't the last sentence, which is our position, and I think it's pretty clear we get evidence as to why we think it is this way. But it's critical that we be the recipient of the sand if we're going to widen and deepen the inlet. That's our position, and I hope the board all agrees. We think we should get that sand. And the other is that uh, ATM's position, placement anywhere other than Holden Beach would cause adverse impacts on our west end, on our east end. And I think that's a given. I don't think there's any question about that. So to me, those two issues, which is our position, get brought out clearly in this document. And, and, and both too. And both, and both of them. But, uh, I just don't see the need to change the original document. But, uh, but that's my position. There are five of us. Yeah, I can believe it. Uh, like you said, they're, they're almost, almost identical. If you are going to talk about Long Bay later in Resolution 1810, you somewhere up top need to say what Long Bay is. That's one of the reasons I actually, Sorry. And, and one of the reasons I specified we're in Brunswick County and then that we're bordered by the ocean and the area of Long Bay because later we talk about Long Bay. Again, think about it is if this goes at a federal level, people are not going to be intimately aware of where Holden Beach is in the grand scheme of all of the barrier islands. And when you mention things further down in a document, make sure it's been defined earlier. Where's tourism? What, oh, I, I, I do remember taking it, just trying to keep it more focused on, I think, science and sand and the environmental impact rather than the tourism, which is an economical impact. It's, um, I think having the word in there, tourism, Necessary. Uh, I think in the original, it's on page 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down. It's on page 14. It was really, it would have been in page, page 14, third way around. Um, um, no, I, I think that it's since it had been mentioned in the second whereas on 14 where we were talking about recreation and tourism related opportunities, I mean, I kind of remember saying, I'm not sure that it really 
add, but no, I have no objection to putting it back. This, I created this for discussion yeah. and. It's in there. 14 is the same as 17. Yeah, it says it on page 14, the second one down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, my, my, my position is uh, maybe we could dial back the, the, you know, a little bit on we're the worst, but that has a cost. You know, we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to present a need. Well, uh, I understand the delicacy of that. But, all right, it's, and I appreciate what the mayor is talking about, too, and it's, it's like, we're looking at a snapshot of today and the last few years and all, and I agree, arguably, would you say that our East End is in worse shape than Ocean Isles? And it's always a question. But, I mean, again, we can change that statement and still make the point that we're in need by, whereas Holden Beach East End has, has significant erosion rates, and then, you know, we've got over the last year, we lost 67,000, which is in the historical, um, whereas 27 oceanfront homes have been lost along East End since 1993 due to erosion. Does that affect? Does that establish the need without saying we are the worst? Which is a it's it's a it's an opinion that's in different reports. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a problem. Um, <clears throat> whenever I agreed for this meeting at this time of day. I thought it was a one item agenda. Yeah, I know. It was going to be a five to 15 minute meeting. I have to be at the college. I've got a mass of people waiting for me. And I have to be there at 11 o'clock. I apologize. Hey, may I ask, are you more I open on the 11th where we have set the, you're, we're having a meeting that you call? Do you have more time on the 11th? Which is only next Thursday. Thursday. Is that another meeting that we have? You, you come to yeah. 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 That's, that? that's the, yeah. And wouldn't this meld into that? We'll have to have those exactly. people. Right. Would, would people object to that. six more days? I would encourage you to hear what they're going to hear at that meeting. Yeah. I, I don't want to delay this any more than other people, but would people agree that six more days and we can come to that meeting with everybody's thorough what you would see to change, add, whatever, and make a decision on Thursday the 11th? That's fine with me. Whatever, we, we can do it after the, We have to table this one. Then we would, yes, but I'm, I'm just asking the question. I mean, you guys are welcome to continue. I can leave. Yeah. No, you got to make a yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. No. I, like, I like the idea of the, the original document from the standpoint of, and I know you can get a little too short in your, in your verbiage, and I appreciate the fact that, Pat, that you want to have further identification for those that may not be familiar with our area or our island. But in going back and looking at the document, if that's what we agree to do, Right, that uh, I think we keep it short, we keep it to the point. Mm, I'm just going to say that if I use small type, if I, I'm not, I not small type. Yeah. I'm not saying no, small type. No, no, what I'm just saying, saying I did not, verbiage. I did not verbiage. add, I did not add that much. One of the reasons it comes across as much longer is that again, I used a type that I actually had an easy time reading. Yeah. yeah. No. No. And, by that I mean when you look at the document and I look at the whereas and the whereas and the whereas in the original document, they're very short little statements. And that, so if we can keep to the short statement idea, I, I like that. You know, six days is six days. And, um, you, you know, you, you tell me, David, does anything happen between now and six? I feel like uh, I'm watching Washington, D.C. here. Can I help with you answering that question? Well, I, I can tell you that, let's see, today's Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
Thursday the 11th. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To, to our knowledge, no, I don't think so as far as it was other meetings. But Thursday the 11th. That's what I'm trying to uh, you know, we, a decision could be made between now and then. And, and, and I'd, 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 I'd accommodate the mayor too if you wanted, you know, if we went to want to be the worst, you know. But I would, I would make that change and, and I'd feel more comfortable doing something today. I don't, want to, I don't want to look next week and say, oh, if something happened, we're, why do we wait a week for, for nothing? I mean, I could, I could go with either version right now. Okay, and I think we could accommodate the mayor's issue by just eliminating Long Bay comment. It's the worst erosion rate on the island. I, I think we still have to just have a statement that there is a significant erosion rate on the east end. We have that. That says that. It's yeah. the worst erosion rate no, on the island. No. You change it to, well, no, it says worst in Long Bay. But we can eliminate worst in Long Bay. And just have worst on the island. It's worst yeah, on the yeah, island. Yeah, yeah, That's I why it's so I'm, important I'm, to I'm us. Our east end, which is affected by the stuff yeah. coming from the east, is to impact it, and that's our worst area of erosion to begin with. I don't think having a long bay comparison is necessarily critical to, to knowing it's important to us and how we decide it. So what do we want to say then? Polo Beach East End has the largest historical... Erosion rate on the island. Yeah. Good. Okay. We, that's what we do talk. Okay, we do talk about long bay as well. Yeah, we I'm, just I'm, we just took long bay out. Maybe I'm looking at that. I'm not the original. Yeah. 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 So for Pat's document, what do we get? Where where in your document? Uh, yeah. What page? The the clerk needs some clarification. <laughs> <laughs> Which one am I switching on? We, I'm sorry. we sort of need to work yeah, from um I think Pat's is on page twelve, the third one down. I really, I really don't. I think they would have had to let us know if they're going to hold a county meeting by now. As many groups as have to come in from outside, if y'all want extra base. So what we would do is, is uh, third whereas, whereas Holy Beach East End has the largest historical erosion rates on the island. On the island, with 27 oceanfront homes having been lost since 1993 through a road. Like period. You know, and then, and then yeah. go on. Okay. My question was, I suggest, do we want to put the dates in of the most recent monitoring covered, or do we not need to? We just don't then. Okay. Which, which, I think That's there's, the a, I think there's enough argument in here as to the situation. We've given enough examples of the crisis that's in hand, mm -hmm. and we just want to draw attention to our east end is being put at risk. And our position is we want the sand, we need the sand, and if anybody puts it east of us, it probably just, just goes, goes right back into where it goes where we back into the inlet, which we've tried to clear to begin with. So if we're now working from the amended version, what I have is the third whereas on page 12, we change to Holman Beach's East End has the largest historical erosion rate on the island. Right. Eliminating in Brunswick County along Long Bay. Um, the next whereas we simply do not have to put any dates. Um, the whereas on page 13, third down, the typo of long-term beach plan instead of long-erm. Right. Um, under let it further be known, page 13, the second whereas, which was Mike's suggestion, um, whereas natural nearshore transport, blah, 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 um, of time-limited benefit while increasing the negative impact on the Longwood, Longwood Folly. In the, yeah, the, the 
Lockwood Folly Inlet. So you take out potentially impacting and putting increasing the negative impact on. And then on page 14, the fourth, whereas um, instead of modern modeling, state-of-the-art modeling, sorry about that, I just hadn't had it in my head at the moment. And then, Vicki, I'm, I'm, I'm minded like you. I thought I did drop one place comment on tourism, unless I put it back in. It's on the second. Yeah, yeah. it's on the second page 14. I, I think I found it. You found it. Second that, well, there was another one, I think. I may, yeah. I think it, um, Vicki, tell me if this was wrong. Um, the, okay, on the original document, page 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six down after loss of habitat at the end of the sentence yes. and an impact to tourism. Yes. So um, that, that, that. so that would be that would be page fourteen, the third whereas ex including accelerated erosion, loss of habitat. An impact on tur a negative impact on tur tourism, I would say, and the need for placement of sandbags and eventual on tourists. So, do you see that, Town Clerk? Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then those were the changes that we discussed. So you now have the two, the, those were the changes discussed. And it's just a decision which one, which one do you want to approve. Um, the original will have the change to remove the, the largest historical in the county along Long Bay. I'll make a position. I'll take either one. Either one. They're, they're both good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with So whoever makes the motion, decide which one you're doing. Yes. Uh, boss? Yes. Yes. Well, one, one other comment, though. We have to decide whether or not we want to make the vote today or else do we want to delay it for the time. Because and the reason the light bulb just went on during the meeting was only to consider hiring a firm to represent our interests. I think it would, it would be wise for us to see what that firm has to say concerning this particular document, whether they think it's going to help in their representation of us, or whether in some way it could be adverse to our representation. And as Christy said about five minutes ago, since no meeting has been called yet for notification of the meeting, it's very unlikely that anything will be done. So I think the waiting the six days would be the prudent thing to do. It would give us an opportunity to look at the document, both of them, and not leaving that, so I made that point. My other point is, I've heard us say, I'm happy with either one, that both will do it. My question is, which one do we believe is the best? Not not in any way diminishing the work that was put in by either Pat or by the committee, but the finished product that we're going to be deciding on, which one, as an individual, do you believe is the best? That's the one that we should be voting on. So those, those are two things that, that have to be considered, whether we're going to do it today, wait, wait until the 11th, and which one of these documents, if we're going to do it today, which one of these documents do you think is the one that we should be submitting. I'd like to make a motion. Make a motion that uh, we accept Pat's updated version of, of the document to include the revisions that we talked about. And we approve it today. I second that. Yeah. Discussion? Yes, 
have any discussion? Yeah, my, my comment is, the 11th is an event without, we're going to hear from somebody, but then we have to decide, you know, so it will be an event. And I think, I think we got, we're behind the ball time-wise before, I don't want to make that same mistake. And not that it was a mistake before, but I, I, I don't want to, um, I, I see no benefit of waiting. I, I guess my, my comment is more than the potential consultant because I, I would I would have liked to have the mayors one more time over it. Um, I, I I can go ahead with with accepting. Um, I don't think that we will be sending it anywhere before the middle of the month. As Christy says, if something was going to happen we probably would have been notified by now. Well, so it's, well, to have, yeah, it, so I, to have well, it ready doesn't right. necessarily mean we're going to send anything out before the 11th. Right? Yeah. Okay. I, I hope you're I, I'm just saying, but, but it would be, <laughs> no, but it would be, it would be ready if we, but I, I think it's unlikely that it will be sent out before the 11th anyways. Okay, I'll have my comment. I, Hope to God that that is not the case, because this should be sent out immediately to everyone concerned. I hope it's not good. I hope the expectation of staff is not to sit on it. No, I don't. I didn't. And mean, and yeah, look at the front row. But I I think there's a, sending a resolution out, and again, it depends upon the degree of familiarity to the people you send it to. So if people have every bit of documentation and scientific fact and supporting report that we have available already, and this is just emphasizing, drawing their attention to it, then the cover letter and the resolution would say, you know, here is, a, that is used in conjunction with data you already have. If you are sending it to people who are less familiar, that do not have all of that. It goes as part of the package. And so, again, that's my question of how we are using this exactly to different audiences. Some audiences that we're using it with are already totally au fait, and it's just a matter of, of sort of re-emphasizing to them why the data supports the resolutions, that they have the data. But if it starts to go further, then it goes as part of a package, not just as a letter and a resolution. So that's why I was sort of like, I'm not sure if we're going to need it next week or not, but it would be ready if we did, and that would be for local use where people already have all the facts, I assume. It's not going someplace new. So again, I, I can go with approving it. I would have liked to have the mayor's one more book. But again, there is nothing that says that we've done it before. We reopened and amended a recently passed resolution because somebody all of a sudden was like, you know, with another set of thinking, I think we need to tweak this. I'd rather not do that. It's our responsibility to follow Less complicated. It certainly is, but again, say I can't see the problem in delaying it until let alone the minute. The people who we may have represent us have an opportunity to tell us whether this is a good idea or not. We're going to the same way we hired other people who are experts in the field. We follow their advice because they have the experience and, and they can help us. And I don't see that this particular, we can, we can decide today which one we're going to use. And on the 11th, all of this is, we're going to send it once we listen to these people. Okay. And I don't, I don't see the harm in waiting for those, for those six days. That's, that's so, just like we voted on the first topic of discussion, uh, it, it's time sensitive. This, if we delay it, then we're just saying, I, I don't want to give the impression at all that we're, we're, we're not, that we aren't thinking that this is time sensitive. This, 
we have a have an opportunity to, I hope, that things are stopped now. I don't know when they're going to start back up. So um, to me, this is extremely time sensitive. Um, and it should be back on today. So that's my position. Acting on it is approving the version. Correct. No, well, the motion, the motion says approving the version and sending it out, is what I understand. That's, that, that's not what the, that's not the motion, that's that's not what the motion not. said, and if you guys could please do us a favor and clarify, since you guys don't seem to be on the same page, could you also add the vote as to whether you want us to send it or just keep it at this point? Because I just, we don't want to, if half of you are saying what you if the motion is to accept Pat's updated version of the document to include the revisions we talked about and approve it today. So that's just approving it at this point. Okay. And then I'll modify the motion to both approve it and for the town to send it. Send it to whom? Please be specific. Send it to the list of people. That's why I asked the question in the beginning of the meeting for the folks that would be receiving this. They didn't want to repeat it. I said the county commissioners, North Carolina Division of Water Quality, Division of Water Resources, um, Representative Iver, Senator Raven, the North Carolina Congressional Representative Rouser, our states, our, our U.S. Senator, and then also the, the Corps of Engineers. But, but I would qualify that to, to allow the staff's discretion in addition to, us, to um, whenever we say, well, we need to send it to so and so. Why does, if we, if we could administratively understand that it's our job to make sure that it's distributed as widely as possible in addition to uh, the more obvious ones. And that is without any supporting documents. The document is the resolution. No. So again, there's no people. Pe yeah, people who are local are very aware of and have the data. When it gets further, there is not the same database available to the people who have received the resolution. Does this make a difference or not? My opinion and experience is it does make a difference if you have attached appendices supporting data to people who get a resolution who are further from the immediate area. So although the local immediate people can get a resolution without any additional information, I don't know that you do that to the state or federal, if you want them to take it, let's just say, with, with the utmost priority. I think that that's where having it. So it's not that sending it immediately to every, of every one of the targets is necessary to achieve the purpose. It's sending it with the right information as promptly as possible. So if it's the, the local, the county that gets the resolution because they know everything else, and the local core, they know everything else, that's one thing. Sending it to Rouser without any other, shall I say, evidence or substantiating information may be premature and not enough. And again, I would rely on the staff's discretion of how to do it beyond our immediate area the most appropriate way with the most persuasive data or, or summary report or whatever. You know, to me, uh, you know, the revised document and your verbiage the, that you added to here is, is self-explanatory as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, but there's a motion on the board. Yeah, my only point is um, na nationally, state-wise, we're, we're, we've, we've gotten a little, a little bit of news lately that I think people, uh, you know, we're, we're focused and we should strike while the iron is hot. So that's 
but I, I think people know where um, Wilmington, Rachel Beach, and the Barrier, uh, us as being the Barrier Islands, they, they know where they are across the country right now. Mm. No. <laughs> I, 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 guess, I guess I still believe that in general when people talk about Outer Banks and Barrier Islands in, in North Carolina, there is still a focus on Wilmington and North, but it's just, and, and I'm not, I, I, I do believe that the Florence impact is important to, to build on it, but that's not about inlet dredging. That's about, that's about beach damage, just to comment, okay? I, again, I think it's, it's fine to approve one of these if the decision is we want to use it locally, quickly, Although I'd still say it would be worthwhile waiting until the 11th. Um, but when we go further, I, I would prefer to have the staff to evaluate whether or not there needs to be an addendum if we're going to send it out at a state and federal level to get maximum immediate recognition. You don't want it to go to the bottom of the pile. Madam Clerk, could, could you just read the motion one more time, please? Yes, sir. No more discussion. We can do it Okay. Um, motion by Commissioner Butler to accept Pat's updated version of the document to include revisions we talked about and to approve it today. Second by Commissioner Fletcher. And then the motion was modified to approve it and for the town to send it to the list of people mentioned earlier. And I do not have the second on. The and and, and list of people okay. and like David mentioned, if there's if, you know, leave it up to staff if there's uh, more of that. So are you, are you modifying your motion? Are you modifying your motion to David's comment? Yeah, I'll certainly accept David's opinion on this and certainly modify the document accordingly. The motion. The motion. Excuse me. Second. I agree. Okay. So all in favor, sir. Aye. 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 Four against, say no. No. So it's four to one motion passes. Move to adjourn. Move for adjournment. Second. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.